Elevation Church is a Southern Baptist church pastored by Stephen Furtick in North Carolina. Elevation has 17 locations and is one of the fastest growing churches in the United States with a reported attendance of 26,000 people. Taking a cursory glance at the beliefs listed on their website, Christians would hardly find anything wrong with many of the statements. However, as a result of file cabinet theology, there is a darker side to Elevation, which I'll be exploring coming up. What's happening, educated guys and gals? I hope you had a good week. Really quick, if you like the content on this channel, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right, and then hit the bell for notifications. All right, let's delve in. Since 2006, Elevation Church has given more than $10 million in Mercy Ministries. As a result of Elevation's week-long outreach called Love Week, which began in 2010, members have done tremendous charitable work, including packing more than 10,000 sandwiches for the homeless. If one focused only on Elevation's mostly accurate statement of faith, along with its powerful charity work, there would be little room for criticism. However, a closer examination of the church's theology and practice tells a very different story. At the center of Elevation is its lead pastor, New York Times bestselling author Stephen Furtick. Furtick is a powerful orator, but he has been the recipient of a lot of criticism from conservative Christian leaders over the years. When Dr. MacArthur was asked his opinion about Stephen Furtick, Pastor John's short reply was, unqualified. Rather than self-reflecting upon a senior elder's opinion of himself, Furtick took tremendous pride in this criticism and based the title of his book upon Pastor MacArthur's single word remark. The Elevation Pastor is known for making frequent erroneous statements in his sermons. The power of God was in Jesus. The healing power of God, the restoring power of God, the same power that made demons flee was in Nazareth, but Jesus could not release it because it was trapped in their unbelief. And there's one thing that even Jesus can't do, one thing that even the Son of God can't do. Even Jesus cannot override your unbelief. That's heresy. In Daniel 4, 34 and 35, Yahweh's dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth. And no one can ward off his hand or say to him, what have you done? And in John 6, 44, Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. The unbelief of man can in no way thwart God's divine decree. Rather, as Proverbs 16, 4 teaches, the Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Twice in this same sermon, Furtick states that humans view who God is through the lens of their lives. But in Christianity, the starting point in understanding who God is is through God's own revelation of himself in Scripture. In my toy. You know, I like to illustrate stuff. It ain't sulfuric acid, it's just water. Now this is called... The Drenchinator. I'm praying about whether to follow through on this illustration. And I hear the Lord say, Yes! That's funny. I don't see anything in here about how the teaching elder is supposed to spray the congregation with a water gun. Maybe you guys can help me out with that in the comment section. One major problem with Elevation and other mega churches like it is that many who attend there are fooled into believing that they are true Christians when they are not. And the true Christians who are there are starving for God's truth but are not receiving it. If you know Jesus, I am sorry to break it to you. This church is not for you. Yeah, but I just gave my life to Christ last week at Elevation. Last week was the last week that Elevation Church existed for you. More heresy. The church is first and foremost a community of believers, and in Acts 20:28, 20, Paul specifically instructs the church elders to be on guard for themselves and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Likewise, the apostle Peter states, Therefore, I exhort the elders among you, as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and a partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness. Notice the last phrase there by Peter, not for sordid gain. Furtick has also been criticized by many for using the income from his book sales and speaking fees to help purchase his multi-million dollar 15,000 square foot home. While Furtick's claim that these expenses were not paid by his church salary, it still raises serious ethical questions from a Christian standpoint. Contrast Furtick with John Piper, whose income from book royalties and speaking fees go directly to the Desiring God Foundation. In summation, Stephen Furtick is more or less a word-faith preacher whose 
sermons are full of heresy, an elevation church, rather than having a plurality of elders, who themselves are under the authority of a presbytery or congregation like the New Testament outlines, employs a CEO-type model, where the single pastor possesses unquestionable power. If you're a fellow believer caught up with this organization, I strongly recommend that you try to find a solid reformed church in your area, so that you can accurately hear the true gospel preached week after week, and be uplifted by others of like precious faith. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. Once again, if you like the material on this channel, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. I upload a new video every Saturday. Have an awesome week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.